Good morning, everyone. It's Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball. I hope you're having a really good, um, oh my gosh, is it Wednesday already? It's been one of those weeks. So um, we've got an update on Gypsy Rose Blanchard, a story that I follow quite um, closely on my column at Pathios. I am a person that um, my column covers a lot of cases similar to the one involved with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And I'll obviously, most of you know she is um infamous for her um upbringing and the death of her mother Dee Dee after um she was her mother was um killed by her boyfriend um Nicholas Gajun a um crime that took place after years and years and years of um Gypsy being abused by her mother However, so she has been in prison. She accepted a plea deal of second degree. Um, you know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> so here's the, yeah, the whole story is insane. But today we're going to talk about um, what's been going on with Gypsy. So she has been in um, Missouri's um, Department of Corrections for um, four years now. She took the plea deal in 2015 and she will be serving 10 years. So she's nearly halfway through the sentence. During this time, she has been working on getting her GED. Um, she hasn't quite finished that as of um, now. I guess she's got just a few more steps ready. She's also been working on getting therapy and services through um, the system, getting classes to help her deal with the trauma of her upbringing. And she's had the time to meet a man, amazingly. So apparently, this is how it all went down. Gypsy was, if you remember, there was a documentary that was out on um, HBO, HBO called Mom, Mommy, um, Dead and Dearest. It was released a couple years ago. After um, this individual watched the documentary, they actually reached out to Gypsy and they began emailing on this um, through J, J mail over the course of a couple years they got to know each other they've met about the family says six times six to seven times and it was in January of 2019 that the two decided oddly that they were going to get married now the decision to get married has a lot of her family members concerned because if we know anything about Gypsy is she's never lived independently. She's never had anything outside of her life on her own. She was 23 years old when everything happened with her mother and she was living under her mother's care at the time. Um, she has been, for all intents and purposes, uh, a child up until her point now incarcerated. So she's never done anything independently and her time behind bars has been controlled. Um, she's been under a lot of, um, you know, rules, regulations, structure. She's never in her entire life had free will to do anything in the free world. So the choice for her to get married has got her family obviously naturally concerned, um, but she is introducing him to the family. She introduced him this spring and E! News actually shared the photos and then there was an article that was done with an interview from a family friend that gives a little bit more details that we'll talk about here. But um, here is her fiance. Um, in the photo, you'll see Rob and Chrissy Blanchard. Rob is her dad, Chrissy is her stepmom. And then in above Gypsy is her fiance, Ken. They have not disclosed what his last name is. Ken is apparently from Washington State. Um, they have, again, been communicating for a couple years. And um, that's Ken. So during the meeting, they um, Rob, who is from Louisiana, brought gumbo. And they ate some gumbo and talked and got to know him. Um, apparently, her family, her uh, dad and stepdad, stepmother liked Ken. Um, but again, they are guarded about this decision. Um, 
And then afterward, I think they spent a little bit of time with him while they were at their hotel rooms. According to um, a family source, they haven't communicated with him beyond this initial meeting. So the choice for her to get married is a controversial one. Obviously, I've just said why. Um, but despite that, the, fam the couple says they're going to get married in January of next year, so January 2020, she will still be incarcerated and she will not be released or, I mean, even eligible for parole until the year 2024. And at that time, she will be 33 years old. Now, if you remember, Gypsy had, Gypsy has been trying diligently to get her sentence reduced or to get a pardon from the government or to request a um, early um, parole hearing due to the situation, the um, circumstances connected to what happened. Um, at this point, it has not been successful. She sent out a letter earlier this spring asking people to send letters to the warden and to the governor. Um, however, nothing has changed. The, the date for the parole hearing is in 2024. I believe they'll meet to discuss if there'll be other options in 2021. So she's still got years behind the walls and she's not going to and she's going to get married, I guess, which is really the part of things that gets the family concerned. So here's what the deal is. Um, Fancy Marcelli, who is a family friend, she's actually helping Gypsy write a book called By Proxy. Um, she was interviewed by In Touch Weekly and she told them that um, she said they're planning to get married in Jan in January. We've all voiced our concerns to both Gypsy and Ken, including both Christy and Rod. It's not that we don't support them getting married and their relationship or any of those things. What we don't support is the shotgun of a wedding, and they don't understand why. There is nothing that changes their situations by them getting married in prison. So she went on to say that um, Gypsy wouldn't be allowed any sort of conjugal visits. She wouldn't be given any more time on the phone, um, legal marriage in terms of rights within her um, facility wouldn't be any different. So she said, it's not like she gets extra phone calls or even more visits or longer visits or private visits, nothing, literally no one changes, nothing changes by them doing this other than it solidifies and that she now comes out as she is a wife. Um, and I think one of the concerns that the family has expressed to Gypsy and to Ken is that she's never had any moments in her life that were her own because her mother controlled everything. And so she said her mother ripped her from every single life moment that a girl would want. So they would prefer that she actually do this outside so she can experience like a true wedding. Um, and so she said she's never had had these moments. She won't get it until maybe when Mia Blanchard is getting married. Um, and she says the family worries that once she sees her little sister going dress shopping with their mom, Christy, um, or dancing with dad, Rod, it'll click. But the opportunity they have already passed her by. Um, and then she said that they've tried to talk to Ken her fiance and air their concerns to him. And, and Fran, um, Fanny said, I've discussed this with Gypsy. Ken's answer to me was, I've discussed this with Gypsy and it's our decision that we've made together. His answer is always, we've talked about it. This is our decision. And Gypsy, and Gypsy, she hears what everyone is saying, but I think she really got this kind of thought process in her head right now that nobody's going to tell me what to do because somebody told her what to do for such a long time. Christy, you know, they addressed her, addressed it with her and they told her how they felt. They told Ken how they felt. And then it came down to we're going to do it anyway. So um, she then went on to say that even though Christy and Rod weren't happy with it, they said, OK, we wish we wish you would wait. We really, really do. But obviously, because you guys because you love our daughter, we're just going to support you, even though it's not at all what we would want for you. Um, and Christy actually told Gypsy that it would probably be better that she not be involved in any relationships, but rather find a year, take a year off after she gets out to kind of find herself, get counseling, figure out what she wants to do with her life, and just be Gypsy before she becomes somebody else's wife. Um, but all of that advice from Christy has kind of fallen on deaf ears. And... <clears throat> 
So when they asked her, you know, what is it going to be like if we, what would it be like if, um, what would the actual nuptials look like in behind the clinker walls? Um, so she said that Christy is still trying to get a bunch of confirmation on this. They're allowed about six people. So her parents would be there, his parents would be there, and maybe two other people. Um, as for who might come, Rod and Christy have two children together, Mia and Dylan. Um, but that's also not including step parents, grandparents, or anything like that. So everyone in the family would basically be robbed of seeing this event go down. Um, and then she said, I, Rod, I'm sure wants to have the private moment with his daughter, but we're not even sure she gets to wear a dress. There are so many rules to how you can stand, how much you can touch, how far you can be, how many people can be touching each other. The pictures that come out of the, um, out of the ceremonies are really awkward and it, but it's not anyone else's fault, but it's due to the circumstances. Um, and then she went on to say that she wasn't sure if this is actually what Gypsy wants or if it's what Ken wants, which is kind of interesting. She said that Gypsy lived under Dee Dee's control for such a long time and she's used to having somebody sort of control her thoughts and control her life. And so she spent, um, she spent, you know, only a couple days behind, um, free with her boyfriend at the time, Nicholas. And so she said that I don't necessarily know if it's Ken's idea to go forward or if it's Gypsy's idea mainly to go forward. They're not saying that it's all we, there's no I in the situation. There's no, I feel, or I want it's we, um, but Fan, the parents worry that Gypsy's um, people-pleasing personality that she's picked up over the years could be contributing to this decision, which would make sense to me. Um, so they also basically said that it's possible that Gypsy's just basically going along with whatever Ken wants and what Ken would like to do at this point. Um, but she insists that Ken has the best interests for her. Ken loves her. Ken wants the best for her. Um, I don't know, you guys. This just seems really odd to me. So what they said about the first meeting was the first meeting was the pictures were released. Um, I'm sorry. They met him at the prison. They talked over gumbo. Then they met afterwards at their hotels. Um, he currently lives in Washington. They've done this entire relationship long distance. He hasn't been able to come visit her as much as he would like. Um, and I think their biggest concern at this point is they've only spent about six or seven times meeting face to face and they really aren't sure about what their compatibility is like like does he if gypsy wants if gypsy's interests are the same as him what would living like be together are they compatible do they have the same interests it's easy on paper and over the phone to think like you're compatible but it's not until you actually get into the day-to-day -day world that you actually start to realize what the magnitude all of, of all of this is. And then there's this whole aspect of what she's lived through and the trauma that she's faced and what kind of person she's going to be. I mean, she's even told Dr. Phil that she's concerned that she's pretty manipulative and she's learned a lot of very cunning behaviors from her mother and that's going to influence her and impact her and that's going to make her that's going to be a reflection of who she is and unless she continues on to get therapy and to help herself um she's going to be at risk of getting into relationships or involved with people that are controlling that um, speak for her that are interested in her um, and her not necessarily having a choice um, and I just, you know, I don't know necessarily that this is really going to be a good idea for her. I, um, I think it's odd that anyone, like, okay, I don't think it's odd that she would want to find love. Every little girl when they're young decides, oh, I want to get married. Every little girl when they're get like young has sort of that idea of what their wedding is going to be like. And they have these romantic ideas of being together. And now she's finally free, sort of, and she can think for herself. And she probably just wants some sort of sense of normalcy. But there's something to be said for the type of person that seeks someone out who is incarcerated. I don't want to be rude, but... If you're going after someone who's not available immediately, there's something going on with you that would make you seek someone out that isn't available. 
Um, and without necessarily really knowing someone, it's really hard to make a choice off the bat whether or not you're really compatible in real life because everything right now is very like it's very romanticized they can talk all day long about what life is going to be like and all the things that they're going to do and how they're going to act but adjusting to the real world for her is going to be like walking into a tornado she's never done anything on her own she's never paid bills she's never had a job she's never done anything on her own period so you're this is the part that concerns me. So Gypsy is going to get married to a man she barely knows. She's going to leave. She's going to come out a wife. She's going to walk into what a manufactured world where she's never had a single moment to herself. And then all of a sudden she's going to walk into a marriage and she doesn't even know who she is. She's never identified like what her interests are or, you know, what she wants to do with her life. And I completely agree with her mother, with her, um, stepmother about she does need to find time for herself she does need to take care of herself um she's not free she's in an institution like you just said jennifer she's not doing this independently this is very very structured and once you're out of that structured environment so she's going to go from her mother's control to the prison's control and now she's with a man that seemingly could be influencing this choice and it's interesting to me that he reached out to her after watching a documentary. This happens a lot with high profile cases where people get interested in being connected to the person based upon their fame or the notoriety it will give them. Or um, So he can pretend all he wants that he really loves her, but there could be an aspect of fame chasing with him as well because you know, I can understand, you know, feeling compelled to reach out to someone, but then there's this whole other aspect of like getting involved with that person. Um, and what is your mindset that you're going to get involved with someone who's literally never had a free moment in their entire life? Like, what on earth do you even have in common? You can't have anything in common. It's it's absolutely bizarre to me. I don't understand this. I, I really worry about this. This. Um, I don't know. Exactly. They become fanboys and fangirls. And you can see this with other high profile cases. There's um, like Scott Peterson um, from of the Lacey Peterson um, whole thing. I mean, women, uh, he's in, he's in California. He's got, you know, he's facing down the sentence of a very final sentence, if you know what I mean. And women are sending him thousands of letters a year trying to get with him. Um, Lyle and um, Lyle Menendez and Eric Menendez, they've both become married behind bars from fangirls. Um, there's something to be said about the type of person that would get involved with someone. And it doesn't make a, I don't know. It, you just have to be so careful in the situation, Gypsy. And I would agree that probably what her mother is saying or her stepmother is saying that, you know, or what Fanny was saying was that she's never had anyone. She's never been able to say, like, screw you, I'm going to do what I want. She never got to rebel as a teenager. Um, and so this could be a very rebelled sort of phase. And it's very likely based on like how like much her life was controlled that she's very immature. I would not expect her to be functioning as a 26 or 28 year old woman. I would more expect that she's probably acts like a teenager. Um, yeah, Chris, there's, yeah, Chris Watts, Jody Arias, like all of these people, they get these fans that are like obsessed with them. And it's so bizarre to me. I don't know why you would reach out to someone who is, um, I mean, in Gypsy's case, I can see something where it's like, okay, yep, you feel bad for her. You understand the plight that she went through, but you guys, she also had other options and she didn't take them. And I think we always forget that. Yes, she was a victim, but she became, she also became a predator and we can't negate the choices that she made. So anyone that has that capability and is raised by someone that's like Dee Dee is going to be influenced and her life is going to be shaped by how her mother acted. And that's a big deal. So what she's actually going to be like in the real world is telling, and it's probably, I mean, I would venture to say she's probably got some personality disorders because of this and going to need a lot of therapy. 
She needs a lot of therapy. She needs, yeah. They could have things in common. I mean, everyone has said that he's a nice, nice guy. Um, but I don't believe that anybody in this situation should be doing this. But, you know, this is just my opinion. Gypsy doesn't care what Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball thinks, you guys. But I was I was digging online to try to find something where, because most of the outlets are saying like, oh, yeah, Christy and Rob are totally okay with this, which seems nuts to me if you actually have watched interviews with Christy and Rob. They seem very, like, cautious about Gypsy. And the two of them are literally just getting to know her now because Dee Dee kept them so alienated from Gypsy for so many years. So, I don't know. I would love to know what your thoughts are and what you think about this relationship. Do you think it's a good idea for her to be getting married? Do you think she needs more time? Do you think it would be better for her to just stay single and just get through her time and work on herself? Um, let me know in comments, and I would love to hear from you. If you want to reach out to me, feel free to t contact me at Without a Crystal Ball or w at W A O Crystal Ball on Twitter, or um, without Facebook.com slash Without a Crystal Ball on Facebook, or on Instagram at Without a Crystal Ball. I'm always here, and I'm always like willing to answer your um, messages if I have time um, and I'm always reading your comments. So just let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you give me this video a thumbs up and go ahead and share the content if you're enjoying what I do it doing. It's been amazing watching this channel grow over the last few months and I am all, I'm appreciative so much of all of you for following and um, watching me every single day. Also, I will be giving, I will be going down to the post office today to get a PO box because many have, many of you have let me know. You would love to send me fans or stuff. So I'll get that information out as soon as I have it. I'll be back later with more stories from my column on Without a Crystal Ball. Bye, guys.